I'm here to inform you today about the Delbert Day Cancer Institute at Phelps County Regional Medical Center. This is a new hospital building that will be available to put all cancer services in one location. This will include medical oncology, radiation oncology, and easy access to imaging. This is a very important concept since cancer is a growing problem in our county and in this region in Missouri. Having a dedicated cancer center will help allow people to have access to service in one location and have access to uh, investigational therapies and other drugs that may not be readily available elsewhere. In addition, you don't have to travel 100 miles in any of the directions away from Rala to receive these cancer services. As a radiologist, I see patients with cancer almost every day. My job is to diagnose those cancers as early as possible to help the medical oncologist and radiation oncologist have a cure for those cancers. Our medical oncologist and radiation oncologist are world-class physicians, and they will provide top-notch care. As a cancer survivor myself, I have undergone their therapy and their help. The medical staff and the, their nursing and clinical staffs are excellent and very caring individuals. Kim and I were both raised knowing that it's vitally important to give back to our community. The Cancer Institute is one of the ways that we both could give back to one of the most important assets in our community and also at the same time honor dad's work in cancer treatment. It's particularly gratifying when you are recognized in such a way by the people who know you as opposed to people who don't know you so well because the people who know you know that um, no one is perfect. <laughs> but um, I was very pleased that um, the people at PCRMC felt there would be some value in associating my name with something which we all hope will do so much good for the citizens in this area. And of course, uh, that's an area that I've been working in for many, many years. And it's just a joy and a great pleasure to see that that work is being recognized in this way. It's a major surprise because I would have never thought that that would have happened, but of course I'm very happy that it has happened. But it has helped us to unify our goal in patient-centered care. Uh, we have already been able to hire a nurse navigator to help streamline breast cancer patient diagnosis and treatment. We have already been able to hire and coordinate genetic counseling through Cox in Springfield. We've been able to go ahead and uh, start our electronic medical record process, which makes uh, the patient's data instantly accessible to both medical oncology and radiation oncology. And we have also been able to join the Cancer Research of the Ozarks CCOP uh, for our clinical trials so that now we're able to offer uh, standard uh, national clinical trials locally and all of that came about because of the initial donation and trying to expand that now to build a new building to unify all that into one place is our ultimate goal. World-class healthcare close to home, uh, so true for my journey. The team in place at PCRMC, radiation oncology, and the Bond Clinic surrounded me with the best treatment that I could um, expect, that I could get. I researched that, I knew that, I trusted that. Um, resulted in 
the treatment that I did receive resulted in where I am today, uh, 11 years, over 11 years, living a healthy, cancer-free life. The Delbert Day Cancer Institute will have a tremendous and wonderful influence on our community. First off, I want to say our community is significantly larger than simply Rala, or Rala and St. James, or Rala and uh, Waynesville, but really extends 50 to 70 miles in all directions around Rala. We see patients from all of these areas and allowing patients to have access to a wide variety of cancer services all housed in one environment will be a tremendous benefit to our patients. We're envisioning the Cancer Center to be not only providing all these different services, but also a real inviting environment for patients to come to. And so while we expect and will have our patients come to this for their care, this will also be a community place where people can come for cancer screenings and uh, community events for education or support or events to support our cancer community. Um, all kinds of things will be able to happen at this cancer center and it will be a tremendous thing for our area. They helped me start to finish here and I couldn't have asked for more. I didn't need to go to St. Louis or anywhere else because everything I needed was here and I could stay home and I could get the very best care that was available and that meant everything to me. When you think about the Delbert Day Cancer Institute, it's in many ways much more than just a building as the comments of the previous video indicated. It's a whole approach to uh, holistically provide state-of-the-art cancer services to people who live in, our, in and around our service area so that we will not, or our friends or our loved ones, will not have to make the 100-mile trek down the highway, which, which is a long way to go because we'll, that's why the tagline was chosen, close to home, cancer services close to home.
positioning or where we would build this was really uh, something that has been looked at and studied carefully. Uh, one, of the, one of the bigger pluses of positioning it where it is, is frankly the exposure to the interstate. We want everyone to know we've got the world's best community-based cancer center. We don't, it's not like let's hide it someplace and, and let people wonder, wonder what the roof of that thing is over there. So, so if you think the intent is to make it extremely visible, it is. And that also carries through into some of the design features, the glass facades, but it will also be very, very patient friendly in, in every way as we'll get into in, a, in just a bit. And it will also be very energy efficient uh, as well. Uh, the second piece of the location puzzle has to do with being able to tie it in with existing buildings because these will be active patients, active patient departments, and it will, we will be able to supply them from our normal logistical supply chains that are already established here, which will be very economical and very efficient for us to do rather than having it stand alone off somewhere where we have to load everything up in trucks and, and drive it over or make numerous trips every day for this, that, and the other thing. And the first thing I want to do is to publicly acknowledge and again thank Ted and Kim Day for the generous lead gift, which uh, was about three years ago that came uh, in a discussion with, with Ted. Lori Hartley and I were at Matt's Steakhouse and, and it was the, the concept was that, that Ted and Kim would like to make a, a, a large gift to the hospital. Uh, and of course, our answer was, sure, yes. Uh, and then we moved into other discussions that, honestly, where could it do the most good? Where, and, and from that, that was a, an exploratory discussion. That wasn't immediate, or at least an answer didn't come back. But there were discussions with the board of the hospital. And as we looked at it, we looked at, well, what is it that we think our community needs now? And we're doing really well at it. But we know that it's going to be more needed in the future. And with the assistance of support, we can really push it to that true world-class level. And very quickly, we recognize that we are already very good at treating many times, types of cancer. I think that came through and hopefully in the first video I showed you, we all have had people, friends, loved ones that have opted to seek treatment here and received wonderful treatment. But now the question is, how do we move it to that next level? What does it take to do that? And really that was the idea to use the gift to help us do the planning, to help us get started in many ways. And as was mentioned again in the first video, there are some things, and I'll mention them, that because of the gift, we were able to immediately put in place and not wait until this wonderful building gets built. The second thing I would like to address is the, the choice of the name Delbert Day Cancer Institute. Once we had decided, well, we're going to use it to advance cancer services. Then the question came, we would, would, and this was actually brought up from the hospital side, would, would there be a, a desire for, as it's called, naming rights? And in that, out of the discussion, Ted said, well, we asked and said we would like to provide those naming rights. And, he sa and Ted said in the conversation, well, then I believe I'd suggest we would like to name it for my father, Dr. Delbert Day. And that was, again, a very quick, oh, of, sure, it's an, it, and, and, why, and certainly we would be honored, would he do it? And so there was some discussion, and, and Delbert is here, so, so maybe you can talk about the inside of that, but, but he and Shirley, after some consideration, agreed, and we were just overjoyed. And I think those of us that know Delbert and Shirley, 
know at so many levels that they embody in so many ways the spirit of what we want this to turn out to be. Uh, Delbert's commitment to excellence in academia and research in the forefront of technology, his commitment to the community, to the church, to various civic organizations that he's exhibited for over 50 years, uh, the fact that, that, that his name in academic engineering circles is known around the world. Uh, these are all the attributes that we certainly, and, and then though that he's, they're approachable, they're compassionate, down to earth, these are, we, we, we thought we could not have invented a better individual to, to lend the name to our enterprise. More specifically, something that probably you may not know, that, that Delbert actually invented, licensed, patented, Therospheres and rad spheres. What are those? Well, actually, simply put, these are very, very tiny glass beads that can be loaded with chemotherapeutic, that's chemotherapy, the drugs that we use to kill cancer cells, or can be loaded with radioactive components and then injected, and they are transmitted by the blood right to the site of the tumor in, in the instance that, of what they're, the application that's been, I think, approved is for liver tumors. And it has these two treatments, even though it almost sounds like what I'm talking about is space age, futuristic technology, no, they exist. These are now standards of treatment for certain types of liver tumors. And Delbert invented these. And so he is an active participant in the research and the development of new cures and treatments for cancer. So again, uh, how appropriate that our center be named the Delbert Day Cancer Institute. Now about the building itself. It is a four-story building, and as I said, it, it is in an L-shaped configuration. You can see that I, this will not be visible to some of you towards the back of the room, but you'll get the idea that there is an L-shape. And as I said, one arm of the L directly faces the, one, faces the interstate, and the other arm wraps back around the east side of this building, of the medical office building. The, once it is constructed and built out, the ground floor and the first floor level, which is we are on the first floor. Now again, as I was talking to some people in the room, it can be a little confusing because we are, we are a large facility that, that is all interconnected on a hillside and we're on all sides of the hill. So, so basically, some time ago, we arbitrarily decided to call some things ground floor, some things first floor, second floor. However, depending on where you are in our complex, sometimes it doesn't necessarily seem to make a lot of sense how we named it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, but that's why we named it. So we are on the first floor so that you can walk anywhere in our facility and not walk up any stairs or take an elevator and everything will still be called first floor as opposed to, well, you need to walk up to the first floor. Uh, so here we have ground floor and first floor. Two complete floors will be built out once the building is complete, and that com those components that we will call the Delbert Day Cancer Institute will all be located in those first two floors. On the ground floor, one of the major components will be a new and expanded radiation 
Therapy Center. That will be our, our linear accelerator, our radiation treatment machine that uh, is used every day, day in, day out. It is now driven and operated by computers, of course. So, so there is a lot of support and planning computer equipment that goes with that. And all of that has to, of the radiation part of it, has to occur within a really thick concrete walled vault. And so the blue area in the arm of the L that, that goes behind, that wraps around the side of the office building will be, that, it will be the area where the radiation therapy center will be, the new radiation therapy center will be located. Other things that will be on the ground floor will be, of course, a really nice lobby. You kind of got an idea of what it might look like from the uh, walk in and walk around on the computer simulation. There will also be on that level community meeting room spaces to support uh, a whole variety of community type education which is also going to become part of the mission of the Delbert Day Cancer Institute. But these meeting rooms will also be available for other types of community health education activities. There will also be space at this level for things like a coffee shop, small retail spaces or boutiques that might be selling wigs or or bras or other types of special prosthetic devices that, that particularly cancer patients might have difficulty getting or have to drive into St. Louis or Springfield in order to find. So then as we move to the floor right above, which will be called first floor, the main, some would say it should be second floor, but it will call first floor. Um, will be the main payload from a clinical perspective there will be the chemotherapy center and all of the offices of our medical oncologists as well as some additional clinic space for visiting specialists and other yet to be recruited cancer specialists in the areas of plastic reconstruction, breast surgery, urology, there's a whole list that we believe because we have such a nice complex and center that that will aid in us recruiting them and bringing them here. Right now, they don't know they're coming, but they will. <laughs> Just ask Mary Graham. Mary was here. That they're, They think they're going to stay in St. Louis the rest of their lives. That's wrong. They're, some of them are going to come here, probably, if we play our cards right. And make their and and then bring their specialty to the Delbert Day Cancer Institute. There will also be a laboratory planned at this level uh, for the convenience of patients, uh, because when you come here, the idea is we want to have everything under one roof, uh, and it, not that you come and get radiation treatment and chemotherapy on the same day. No, you don't, but. Inevitably, there are other types of laboratory and radiology services that, that through the course of your treatment, you will need to get. And so our view is we don't want you to have to run across town or to even walk back to some other part of the hospital in order to get that. There will also be uh, just additional space for uh, physician clinic space that will be on this level. Now the, the two floors above are going to be just like this when the building's built. They're gonna be empty shell spaces. That will be where the Institute grows into in the future over the next 10, 15 years. But, uh, it will also provide available space for additional physician office space when this space gets filled in, which it will probably by this time next year, this will all be infilled with clinic space. And at that point, we will be out of space for physicians' offices. So it, so it will serve a backup purpose of providing room for future growth of our medical staff. However, 
we will always give priority to the cancer-based and cancer-related specialties as we assign office space. Now I want to drop back a little bit and go back to, to pointing out just some statistics that, that I think are, are kind of grim statistics, actually, which I think, though, underlie all, all of those people that have so energetically been working on this fundraising campaign has driven them. Um, and and uh, so I would like to point these out to you, that, that uh, one out of every two males and one in every three females will develop cancer during his or her lifetime. That's pretty sobering when you, when you think about it. But on the other hand, when you think about the people, the friends that you associate with, members of your own family, it, it makes sense. Uh, it is, in our community, cancer is one of the top three most common illnesses. Now, and, and the other thing that I would have to say that, that currently we, based on our capabilities, looking at the types of cases that arise from people in our area, we have the capability and in fact do treat about 40% of all those cases. However, once that we have built the Delbert Day Institute out and equipped it and put into place the additional new programming and clinical elements, we believe that we'll actually be able to uh, treat up to an additional 500 patients a year. And where will they come from? Well, they will be some cases that currently are leaving because we don't have exactly the capability needed at the moment, but we will be developing that and obtaining it. And some of that would be people that live in counties that are sort of outlying counties that really don't really have strong attachments to Rolla and our area. But certainly for them, the drive of 40 or 50 miles would still be a very doable drive and it would be closer and more negotiable in many ways than driving the 60 or 70 miles into St. Louis or Springfield. And so that we fully expect that, that by having the new building and putting the services together, and of course, making sure everyone in our market area knows about them, that we will be recruiting new area, new patients that will come and experience those wonderful services as the presenters in the first video talked about, who now don't even give us a thought. They just jump in the car and head on into St. Louis or Springfield. Another sobering point about the statistics is that by all intents and purposes and analysis, the rates of cancer are are not being overall reduced. And as our population, which I certainly resemble this remark, continue to age, it's just one of those things that if you're lucky enough to live to a certain age and not uh, develop cancer of some type or other, the odds are pretty good that you will because, uh, because there's a high correlation between the age of a population and the instance of cancer. So we see this, and so, so we see this as something that, that it would be great if, if I could tell you that, well, we're going to build this building and we're gonna start treating patients and we see a cure within a 10 year horizon. No, we don't. Not, there will be some quote unquote cures for some cancers that, that they're close, but not there yet. But will more and more be treatable? Yes, there will be. But will there be more and more cases appearing? Yes, there will be. So, that, so that's another reason why we're not just planning about what we do today. We're really trying to think about how we best meet the needs of our community 10 years from now. And that's, that, this is our best not guess, this is what we believe is needed now and is needed 
particularly five years from now and 10 years from now. Time frame of the project, uh, if we were to move at the rate we're moving, we would have construction, we continue to move at that rate, we'd have construction documents uh, ready to bid out late in the spring. We could start construction uh, in the early part of the summer. It would take, a, it, we are told it will take about seven, 15 to 17 months to complete. So we would be looking at a completion date at some point in, in 2016. Aspects that we want to make sure to build in, the concept of patient-centered care. Our architects, one of the things that has slowed our process down is that our architects are actually meeting with focus groups of, of patient, cancer patients that have been treated, some have been treated here in Rolla, some have been treated in St. Louis or Springfield, or some have even gone to MD Anderson or Mayo's. And we're asking them, what did you like? What did you not like? If you could have your treatment any way you wanted it, how would you like that to be? If you could, what would the facility look like? Not so much would it be a big facility or little, but in terms of what would be available, what would the seating look like? If you're a patient that gets chemotherapy, what kind of chair would you like to have? Now this is kind of remarkable because most times when us hospital administrator types and doctors sit down to build buildings, we build buildings that we like and work for us. And we certainly hope that we know enough, about, we, we tend to think we know enough about what patients want or quote unquote need that, uh, but, uh, that we try to be at some level mindful. But here I think one of the unique and exciting things about this building is from the very beginning, patients are right there at the table with the architects telling them, I like this, I don't like this, by all means, don't do this. Not just structurally, but even, but even for our administrative team that's building the program, things like make sure when you walk in that there is someone that will give you a really, really friendly greeting every day to things like that, the sort of the intangible, the soft things. And, and so we are duly noting these and we certainly are committed to build these in to our design and into our programming. State of the art equipment, it goes without saying that if you were to entrust your health to us, you should have every expectation that we are state of the art. But state of the art is kind of a squishy term there's state of the art, and then there's the ability to stay at the state of the art. And I will tell you that while our current armamentarian, our linear accelerator, is state of the art. However, the upgrades and new technology, is, and particularly on the computer side, and computer direction and computed imagery and the hooking it up with the treatment modality is advancing so rapidly that we had already identified a need over this and next year to trade out our linear accelerator, which is now the framework of it is 12 years old. It's like having a 12 year old top of the line Mercedes though. Just because it's 12 years old doesn't mean it's not still one of the finest cars around, it is. However, what if there's a new model, a truly new model Mercedes that is now out there and you, and that will be the model that all the new upgrades will be designed for. You need to, we, our commitment to provide and continue to provide state-of-the-art care would say, well, we cannot wait until we're not state-of-the-art. We, and so, and, and so that's part of this project is to, is to make that change out. Uh, through this project. It was already mentioned in one of the presenters in the video talked about the fact that that due to the gift from Ted and Kim, we were able to proceed on and to actually uh, add a little bit of additional staff and actually make the affiliations necessary to offer 
a certain number of clinical trials to patients. These would be trials that, that normally you would have to go into St. Louis or to go to Mayo's or some other major tertiary cancer center in order to participate in. That will, we will expand that and also with some of this empty shell space, as the opportunity presents, we sincerely intend to move on into basic research in cancer along, along the way. The navigation, what we're talking about there really is not so much how you get around in the building, although we want to make it very easy for a person to go from point A to point B in the building, that's wayfinding, but navigation, it's really a human being that cares about you, that understands how the medical complex works, and from the moment, or maybe even before you have been informed that your mammogram or your study has unfortunately come back positive, you're gonna probably need more workup. You may very well have some sort of cancer diagnosis coming your way. From that very instant that takes you, wraps their arm around you, is your support, your person that will lead you through the whole process and system. That already exists. We do that thanks to the gift. We were able to start that two years ago. Uh, our, nav our, our patient navigator is Carol Walters. She's wonderful. The only problem is I don't know how we're gonna clone her as we develop the program because she's just one person, but it is working out so well. It is so well received that that we already need to expand it. And other elements that will be recognized within the Institute will be therapy support, nutritional support, psychological mental health counseling and support, exercise training and, and, and teaching coping skills, as well as health and prevention early prevention and diagnosis will all be components and operate out of the Institute. The total cost of the, of the project, including the equipment chains out, is, uh, is going to run around $27 million. Um, the board has basically said when we first presented and talked about the project, basically issued the challenge to the foundation to raise seven million dollars of that total amount. And I'm really happy to report on behalf of the foundation that as we move into the public phase, that from the so-called quiet phase of the campaign, that 4.5 million is already, and commitments have already been raised. But that is not seven million. So. That's one of the reasons we're here. We're enlisting your support because we need desperately help and contributions to take us on to that seven million. And at this point, I would, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Ted Day who, and Dr. Ed Downey, if you guys would stand up. They are the co-chairman of the Phelps Regional Healthcare foundation campaign, fundraising campaign. Thank you, John. Uh, Dr. Downey decided he was gonna help support me in this too, since he is actually the co-chair uh, of the campaign. You know, where to begin and, and what to say, um, I can sum it up in two words. Thank you. Uh, we've had tremendous support uh, to date, and I just wanna encourage and invite all of you to consider joining us in contributing to what we think is an extremely worthwhile and honorable cause. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Downey. One point I want to make is that each dollar given to donation equals $144 of revenue that the hospital receives. So for example, $1,000 of donation would be $144,000 that the hospital would have to receive in revenue from patient care. 
So philanthropy is a very important part of the ongoing support of the hospital in our community. I really believe that we have a wonderful opportunity here to enhance the services for central Missouri uh, in cancer care, something that uh, we've done well and we can do much better for a lot more people. Our encouraging words for potential donors would be to ask everyone to join us in supporting the Hospital Foundation's mission to raise the necessary funds to make this happen. The Cancer Institute will impact countless lives, maybe someone you know, maybe even a family member. Help us make a difference in those lives and make the best comprehensive cancer service just a few minutes away from home.